Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, and it is time for LN Classico 2 Electric Boogaloo. If you haven't already, do please consider hitting that subscribe button, ring in that bell if you do want to be notified when new episodes go live, and leave me a comment down below. Maybe even predict the result before you get to the end of the video. That might be a, that might be a good shout. But we are facing off against Burnley today in the East Lancashire derby, the LN Classico as it's known. And let's give you a quick rundown as to what our team is going to look like. So not much changed from the last episode. Still Armstrong and Wind combining together up top. But this time Curtis Jones is playing in the attacking midfield role. And then we have Evander and Travis in the centre. Evander has a Metzala that will roam out onto the left a little bit. And Travis there just to break everybody's kneecaps who tries to run past him. And then our back line is a little bit different looking where we've got Manu Sanchez, Simjinovic, Sviatchenko and Niambe. But Machucha has dropped to the bench and Dara Lenahan has come on for his first start of the season, I believe. Let's just double check this. Premier League. No, he's played two games and then came off the bench twice as well. Uh, he hasn't played very well, but he's complaining about game time. So we've transfer listed him and we're going to uh, crack on with actually playing him as well. But first off, let's why not? Let's just offer him to clubs unspecified and see if we get any interest for him. But he needs to be on as a no-nonsense centre-back because that's where he's best and he's playing as a stopper. Uh, Sviatchenko is in his right role. Simjinovic is in their right role. Fantastic. Uh, Manu Sanchez, same. Yep, Nyambe, same. Good. So we have our lineup here ready for the L-Line Classico. Uh, and it is press conference time, as you would expect. So let's dive into this, shall we? Sean Dyche has been surprisingly blasé about the importance to his fans. Do you share his view about the lack of importance in this match? Uh, I was surprised by his comments. This is a match the fans want their teams to be giving everything in, and it looks like he might not be up for the fight. Yes, let's call Sean Dyche a weak link. Uh, it's unusual to hear a manager speak so negatively about an opponent like this. Is there a danger the rivalry between the two clubs has turned into a personal rivalry? I think that's a bit over the top. Well, our last meeting was a fair while ago. What do you make of your chances in this one? We've come on leaps and bounds. Will I be changing the team for such a big match? I'm not willing to discuss tactical details. Local rivalries developed more in a more competitive context. Most rivalries began because of geography. Do you look forward to these matches in the same way supporters do? I can't wait for it. Do you anticipate a positive reaction from your players? The fans play a massive part. Uh... Do you have any worries about the players being able to keep their heads in the heated atmosphere? Our best chances of winning is with 11 players on the pitch. Can we handle the pressure and expectation that comes with the territory when playing? Uh, I'd rather have pressure to succeed than nobody care at all. Yes. Butterworth is playing well when I'm low and I'm happy to see him doing that. Uh, there's a lot to be said for his ability too. It won't always come easily for him and that's important to deal with the ups and downs football throws at you. Nope. I wouldn't expect so. We agreed a deal and we'll honour it. Given Wind thrives on important matches, how much am I pinning my hopes on him ahead of the Burnley clash? He's ready for this and he's trained well. Now let's hope Wind actually scores a goal here for us as we push forward into the L-Line Classico. We, we've got a better league position by four places than Burnley so far. I wonder if he's going to respond, if Sean Dyche is going to respond to me saying he doesn't have fighting spirit. I reckon I'll walk out onto the touchline, he'll just walk up and fucking nut me. Apologies for my language there. I think that's the first time I've hard F-worded in one of these videos. Please forgive me. The rivalry's getting the best of me. <laughs> as these continues start to get on my nerves as well. Let me know in the comments, by the way, guys, what you are thinking of this new microphone. I've been watching back the videos I've been recording, and I think the difference in quality between this microphone and my old microphone is stark my voice is much clearer in this one uh, you can definitely hear the lower end of my voice a lot better i'm enjoying it and it wasn't that expensive either the road pod mic it's not a hashtag ad either i just uh saw it was reasonably priced on amazon here we go road pod mic as you can see so picked it up and it is a massive improvement the right stuff a massive improvement over my uh, Niwa cheap microphone, condenser microphone than I had before. Uh, the reason I think this one sounds a lot better as well is because it's a dynamic mic. It's not picking up all the sound of the room. It's just picking up what's directly in front of it. Uh, and it's designed as a vocal microphone for podcasts. 
so uh, it should be picking up my voice a lot better than my condenser mic was previously but we are getting close to actually being into the game here now we've gone through our lineup uh burnley did have the top scorer let's just click through and see if they still do uh goals yep they still have the top scorer in Bupenza, who came from where? Hyatspor for free. Wow, okay. Oh no, 7.25 million. So Hyatspor signed him in the 2021 for free from Bordeaux. Well, he is a, he's a solid striker. Uh, let's set some players free for the under-23s game. There we go. Ayala, Branthwaite, Williams and Coyle at the back. Pairs in goal. Ranking Costello, Woodburn and Schuer. No offers for Lenahan, fine. Wind is making positive development. He is now worth 22.5 million, which is a good chunk more than we bought him for. We bought him for 10.5, so we've already made 12 million on him. Plus, as we'll be able to sell him for even more than that uh, if if and when we do come to selling time, and he's still only 22. So, uh, But here we go. We should be getting into the game right about now. Once this continues finished, the next continue will get us into the game on this chilly Sunday in December. Yep, Niambe's fit. Rankin Costello is not sharp. Danny Ayala's not got a chance of playing anyway. Uh, United beat Palace 1-0. Now it's our turn to do the same to Burnley. Uh, yes, Travis. Oh, Manu Sanchez can ease off tackles because he's booking away from the suspension. Let's go in for our team selection. We've, we're not changing anything here, but for our... Uh, we are going to go in hard on this fella, and we are going to tightly mark him, uh, especially when he's attacking. Uh, uh, we'll press always, press always, weaker foot. Uh, Dwight McNeil is always going to want pressing. Victor Moses is always going to want pressing. And that's probably going to be it for us for opposition instructions. No, I've apparently I've only selected six from a possible nine substitutes. We can have nine substitutes now. Uh, ben Woodburn. No. Branthan Waite. You can come on there. Boom. Proceed to match. Let's do it. Uh, Curtis Jones is pleased to be back in the team. The only reason you weren't in the team in the last game is because we were playing your parent club and you weren't allowed in the team. But now let's go and make a mess of Burnley in this El Lang Clasico. We want to get a big win here for the fans. Uh, the media have given you a lot of credit. Go and do it. Uh, Lenahan is feeling professional today. It's not the best weather today. How do you think the conditions will affect your performance? We can adapt. It's Derby Day. How much do you look forward to taking on your local rivals? It's always a tremendous occasion. Now let's get ourselves straight to the kickoff, shall we? And let's see if we can smash Burnley as Blackburn Rovers. Let me know in the comments, by the way, what you're thinking about this camera angle where we've lowered it to be what I, I hope is a little bit more immersive. Uh, I play my personal games with this angle because it does feel more like watching a real match. As now we have a throw from Manu Sanchez, finding Armstrong, who spins his man and starts charging his way into the box. Is he going to play it across or is he trying to go all the way himself? It falls to Evander, Curtis Jones. Oof. And it is cleared scrappily there to Victor Moses. Niambe now coming with one of his long throws. But Pope can claim that comfortably before it reaches the head of Jonas Wind. I, I may need to rethink these long throws as Wood nods it down to Moses. And Moses now... Working his way down the right-hand side for Burnley here. Forced back out wide to Eorfa, who plays one in and Wood heads it over the bar. Goal kick to Blackburn Rovers. Kaminsky plays it out wide to Niambe, who plays it back into Sviatchenko, who's pressed, but it ends up with Travis, who plays it forward to Wind, who manages to shake his man, but he's still under pressure and he's dispossessed by Brownhill and Brownhill feeds Wood. Plays it out wide to Victor Moses. Victor Moses is running into the blue shirts here now, but he keeps going down this right-hand side, skins his man, and starts making his way to the box. Some support comes over, though, and it's played in there, and Sviatchenko can head clear. But now Iorfa on the edge of the area. Plays a terrible pass, and Curtis Jones picks it up and sends Adam Armstrong free down this left-hand side. 
Can Adam Armstrong get past his man? He plays a ball into the middle and it's headed away. And now Ashley Barnes to Chris Wood. Back to Victor Moses here now. Everything seems to be coming down this right-hand side for Burnley as that's a lovely ball through to Wood, but he's quickly surrounded by white shirts as McNeil pushes his way through and slides one in at the near post. Kaminsky was already on his knees. That was a rough goal to concede that. We are going to have to give the boys some proper encouragement here, I think. Travis is not feeling great. We're down to 12th here right now. Burnley have leapfrogged us and gone up to 10th. So let's give the boys some encouragement and hopefully that's going to help them out here as Brownhill looks to deliver this corner. Kaminsky claims comfortably and now we maybe can start something for Blackburn Rovers here. That long ball forward looking for the run of... Is that wind on this side now? No, it was still Armstrong. But now it's coming back through Moses again. Westwood plays that forward for Yorfa, but Manu Sanchez is going to clean that up for us. Passes it back to Kaminsky who hoifs it forward, but only as far as Semmer. And now Semmer is coming down the left here. This is the first play we've seen coming down the left, but Travis gets his foot in to dispossess or at least slow him down. And McNeil feeds Barnes, but Kaminsky can save that one and palm it round the corner for a corner. Round the post for a corner, should I say. As Brownhill looks to deliver this one in. But we head away comfortably and it falls to McNeil on the edge of the area. He's forced out wide, though. Lewis Travis is not having the best of games right now as Manu Sanchez throws to Armstrong and it's back with Sanchez here. Nice pass into Armstrong who finds himself in shooting space and buries it in the bottom corner there. One all. Adam Armstrong with, I think that said, his eighth goal of the season there. Nice ball through there. So Manu Sanchez gets himself an assist there. And Nick Pope did not have a chance with that one. The space just opened up in front of Armstrong. And now Pope with a goal kick here. <clears throat> Looking for Victor Moses. But Manu Sanchez beats him in the air. But it only falls back to Eorfa. And now it's back with Moses again. Westwood and Wood knocking it between themselves now. Trying to find a way to break through this, uh, this wall of Blackburn defenders here. Victor Moses cutting inside with a lovely ball across to Wood. Who must have been offside there. The ball's in the back of the net, but the linesman does have his flag up. Is this going to go to VAR? VAR checking. Goal disallowed. Goal disallowed. Fantastic. VAR doing what it should be doing there. Here's the replay for it. Yeah, he was a good yard off. And now let's see if we can pick ourselves up here. We, we have not been the most dominant here at all. We are under pressure quite a lot, but I think that's to be expected from our heavily defensive formation here as Brownhill and Barnes are knocking it between themselves here out on the right-hand side. We clear it, but it ends up just coming straight back again as the author now breaks into the box. Again forced out wide, but he chips one in there and Ashley Barnes can only head it over the bar. We've got to close the author down. Yep, that's not a bad idea. As now Manu Sanchez finds Armstrong with the throw. He heads it inside to Curtis Jones. Finds Lewis Travis and it's back with Jones again. Is he going to bring Niambi into play out on the right? He is indeed. And Niambi has got space to move down this right-hand side, but he's blocked off quickly and it's back to Travis. The 1-2 was on there, but Travis didn't see it. And then Travis's ball back is intercepted by Barnes. Bad pass back that. Lewis Travis is definitely going to be coming off at half-time here, I think. But that shot was uh, wayward. And it goes out for a goal kick. Now we've got another Manu Sanchez throw here to nobody. Straight cleared there. And now Wood and Barnes are surrounded by a sea of blue and white here. And Brownhill and McNeil start coming into play. But they're heavily outnumbered at the back here. And Barnes is dispossessed. But McNeil makes his way through into the area. Tight angle shot there. Lenahan ends up getting the clearance away. And Blackburn survive. Two minutes of added time at the end of the first half here. Currently one all. And half time goes one all. Uh, Burnley have been the better side. We need to make some changes here to uh, stop that from being the case. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Why did it not send me to the dressing room? It should have sent me to the dressing room there. Maybe it double clicked by accident. Uh, but let's see who we've got midfield wise here. We have Bradley Dack. Who can come on for Lewis Travis. Swap with Curtis Jones. And then Curtis Jones can become a deep-lying playmaker on support. 
Dak is an attacking midfielder on support. That works for me. We've still got wind up top. And that's fine for us. But we will go attacking as well. I don't know why it didn't let me give that team talk. But here we go. We're working on it. And now Curtis Jones starts moving forward here. Brings Armstrong into play on the left-hand side. He's obviously going to cut back inside as he plays it in towards Wind, but Wind misses his header and it's back with Travis. And now Jones on the edge of the area. Bad pass there and uh, Burnley are able to get it away. It's Victor Moses plays it back to Nick Pope here and then the long ball forward looking for Wood. It's a good one and it's headed out to Moses, but it was Simeonovic who headed that on as Manu Sanchez dispossesses Moses here and now Armstrong surrounded by a sea of Burnley players. It's dispossessed by Eorfa. And that's a corner kick. Out of nothing, Blackburn have managed to fashion a corner as Bradley Dack enters the field for Lewis Travis. McNeil with a throw here, headed out nicely by Curtis Jones, but only to Burnley players as Westwood switches it out to Eorfa here. He plays it into Brownhill, off the bar. And Blackburn survive again. Niambe with the clearance that time. And now it's Westwood out to McNeil. Finds Brownhill and now Semmer going to look for the delivery. No, it's back with Brownhill to Barnes on the edge of the area and back to Westwood. That ball to Eorfa is a good one, but Eorfa was offside. Didn't time his run very well there. We're going to have to give the boys some more encouragement here, I think. Come on, pick it up, guys. Beautiful dispossession of McNeil by Sviatchenko there. And now Niambe has space to charge down this right-hand side. He's got two Burnley shirts chasing him and one in front. Manages to cut it back to Curtis Jones, who runs inside. Finds Bradley Dack, who feeds Armstrong. And now it's with Wind. Wind feeds Armstrong again. Oh, and Nick Pope does fantastically to deny Adam Armstrong his second goal of the game. Corner coming in now from Evander. Played short to Bradley Dack. Bradley Dak passes his man and plays it into Evander again. Curtis Jones back out to Dak. It's with Jones again to Sviatchenko on the edge of the area. Who switches it out to Simjinovic here on the left-hand side. And Simjinovic, can he play a ball in? He can, but it is headed out by Burnley and Westwood can eventually make the clearance. Still one all. Only 20 minutes, 25 minutes of the game remain. As Sanchez throws it to Armstrong here. And now Bradley Dak with a little bit of room to manoeuvre in midfield. Quickly held up though. Back to Manu Sanchez. Curtis Jones in the middle now, Evander, wind, all the way back to Jones again. Is Jones going to be able to make a play here? He finds Dak, who makes his way into the area, gets his shot on target, but Pope can gather that one easily. It was a relatively tame attempt. It's now Evander and Manu Sanchez combining on the left-hand side, bringing Jones into play deep here, looking for that ball forward to wind. Wind sees Niambe making a move down the right-hand side, but ignores him and instead takes it on himself, moves into the area. Back to Jones on the edge. And now it's Bradley Dack with a shot from range. And Pope gets down low to make a comfortable save. It is more Blackburn Rovers this half so far. Hopefully we can turn something around right at the end as Branton Waite comes on for Manu Sanchez, who's had a fantastic game at the back there. Uh, and Curtis Jones for Harvey Elliott is, is, a, is the play here, I think. Because uh, Curtis Jones is starting to get tired there. Harvey Elliott as the deep lion playmaker. Instead, I'm going to play him as an advanced playmaker on attack and see if he can make something happen for us there. As Sema now delivers the ball in and Simjinovic heads away and Bradley Dak now can charge forward into the open space that Burnley are leaving for him. Jonas Wind in just ahead of him, as is Adam Armstrong. Wind ends up playing it back to Curtis Jones. Evander back through to Armstrong, but he's dispossessed and he takes a knock from that as well. Uh... Let's cancel that because we might need to. Yeah, Adam Armstrong is dead. So Ben Berriton needs to come on for him. We can't make the change that we were going to make. Curtis Jones is just going to have to grin and bear it for the rest of the match. There's only five minutes remaining. So yeah, let's just continue there. Bring on Berriton for Armstrong. That was a nasty, nasty challenge there to injure Armstrong. It's Thornhill hoofs that one forward, but Simjinovic gets his head to it. And now Curtis Jones... Can look for a pass to Evander, who finds Dak, who's again has got lots of space in front of him here. He's got wind ahead of him as well, but he goes for it himself, and Pope can again claim that easily. Oh, we've got a Burnley throw here as he offer. Finds Wood. It's back with the offer again. Finds Brownhill. 
but it's headed out by Sviatchenko and Curtis Jones now is going to try and make something happen from here as he skins his man, finds Ben Bereton. Ben Bereton from Brange and Pope again is equal to it. He could have taken another touch or two there or cut inside and played it to wind. But here we come again with Bereton. Bereton's en energy is making things happen here. He finds Curtis Jones, who's got space to run into here, and it's wind. But it rattles around some Burnley defenders' legs and comes back out, and we have to build again as Curtis Jones finds wind again. And now it's Bradley Dack to Bereton. Back to Curtis Jones. Is Curtis Jones going to be able to find that incisive pass? No, but Bereton did, and then wind's shot was blocked. And it's back to Niambe, and then Jones and Dack combining again. It comes through to wind, whose shot is just wide. Six minutes of injury time here. And we are looking worse for wear as far as tiredness goes here. Nick Pope plays that forward, looking for Wood, but Simjinovic meets it, but it only goes as far as Brownhill and ends up in the hands of Kaminsky eventually. And can Kaminsky start something off here for Blackburn Rovers with one minute left of the game? It falls to Divev. But now Semmer receives the ball from McNeil. And starts making his way down the left-hand side for Burnley. And Bradley Dak dispossesses him. And now Niambe tries to send Wind. Wind receives that beautifully. And now he's got space to move into the area here. And his shot is just wide. Nick Pope looked to have it covered. Either way, 30 seconds remaining here now. Surely this is the, uh, the last action of the game. And Pope is taking his time with it as if Burnley would be happy with a draw here. They're playing at home. These local derbies, you've got to play to win them. And that's it, the final whistle. Honours even here in El Lan Clasico too. Uh, but Armstrong gets himself, I, I say gets himself injured, gets crocked by the Burnley defenders. Hopefully not a serious one. But let's say yeah, you've proved people wrong by avoiding defeat and they're happy with that. Uh, does that record concern you? Uh, some of Lewis's play can be a little bit reckless and he must learn to control himself for the better. Because he must, otherwise I'm going to sell him. Uh, injury worry for Armstrong. Armstrong is out for six to seven weeks. Ooh. Who was it that... Uh, it was D Daviv. Daviv crocked him. This little Russian fella just came and destroyed one of our star strikers. So it looks like Bereton's getting a good run out now. Uh, so let's get ourselves and sort out our midfield here. So Bradley Dak is going to start. Uh, Travis can go to the bench and you can be a deep lying playmaker again. Uh, Bereton has to come on for Armstrong and then Armstrong has to drop out for Schuer there. Um, and that, I believe, is how we're going to play for the next couple of games. Uh, although Lenihan, uh, Machuch is going to come back on for Lenihan. Lenihan can be on the bench for us. Uh, and Branton wait or do we want to go for Rankin Costello we'll go for Rankin Costello no we won't because we've got defenders that can play in those positions I think yeah we've got a left back at least uh, so what's going to happen then is Joe Rothwell is going to go and take that position on the bench but yes let's see do we have a post-match press conference we do not we'll go for one continue just to see if there's a press conference after that there is indeed so let's see what they have to ask us adam armstrong injured himself it wasn't himself in the match today and it looked potentially serious can you estimate how long it he will be out for it can't be confirmed oh early signs suggest it's a pretty bad one it was an unfortunate casualty many have claimed the play was too close to the edge and often crossed the line of what might be considered acceptable physicality what do you make of their style and approach i'm not a fan of it uh, what would you do to change the situation? Do you think there should be sterner punishments for these types of transgressions? Uh, there has to be a crackdown on unnecessarily aggressive football. We have to protect our players and allow them to thrive. Uh, my squad is strong, so while it's bad news that Adam is injured, the opportunity is for someone to step up and impress. Uh, I've not seen anything to worry about. Uh, it's a, in a funny way, I think it'll make us stronger. Yeah, let's, let's go for that. A rallying point for people to go around. But thank you for tuning in today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed El Lan Classico 2 Electric Boogaloo. If you haven't already, I did say at the beginning, but I'll do it again now. This spiel helps all the time because any of these things I'm about to say, if you do them, 
really helps the channel out. So number one, hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and a brilliant way to support the channel. Uh, if you like these episodes, ring that bell. Make sure you get notified when new episodes go live. Leave a lovely thumbs up. That helps us in the algorithm a lot and helps us get these, these videos in front of more people. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, but as always, I have been Deej. You guys have been awesome. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.